very good time, and a very good day to both my supervisors here in Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation, Ms. Inchiat Chang, and also my supervisor back in my university, which is Dr. Mazli Mustafa. So today, I will be presenting on my student industrial training that I have been given here for about one month and one week here in Fuso. Before I start, I would like to say thank you to both of my supervisors for giving me the chance to share my experience and share on what did I learn for the past one month. So my objectives for today's presentation consist of three things. Firstly, I will start by explaining on the company overview of FUSO and then I will continue on giving or presenting about the work culture and experience that I've gained here in FUSO and finally I will finish it off with the conclusion and future expectations towards this company. Ladies and gentlemen, Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation. Although there is, there is the name of Mitsubishi inside the company's name, but don't judge too quickly because Mitsubishi Fuso is actually an integral part of Daimler Automotive Group. Daimler Automotive Group is actually one of the biggest, it's the biggest automotive company. And where do Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Fuso lies in Daimler's AG business units? As you can see, Fuso lies in the Daimler trucks and also in the Daimler buses. This explains why the company's name is Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation. Moving on, these are the four core brand values of Fuso, and I'm sure that Ms. Inchiak Chang has already known this. Well, it consists of four. First is trusted quality of the, of the products that Fuso gave. Committed service by the employees and also the maintenance guy. Thirdly, solid and functional design of the product itself, which Fuso gives. And finally, on the economic efficiency, this explains by our product, for example, the decanter, the hybrid product and everything. Moving on to Fuso's top management organization. Although there is a lot, but I would like to stress three main person which I find the most important for today's presentation. The first one is our CEO which is Mark Listosella. Second one is Kazuo Matsunaga which is the chairman and please concentrate on Mr. Aydogan Chakmas. Mr. Aydogan Chakmas, he is the senior vice president of the Product Engineering Truck Asia which means he is working here in our building in the second premises and he is basically our boss. So if we, if we narrow it down further, in Mr. Aragon Chakmas, we can see the structure in the product engineering organization. So Mr. Aragon Chakmas, he is being supported by executive assistant, Mr. Jack Chang, his staff, and also a couple of level 2s and level 3s. So all of this information, I've gathered it from who is who in the Daimler intranet. And also if you can see here, the intern, which is myself, I am positioned under Ms. Inchia Chang. So that is the, basically the overall view of the company. And now we will move to the important part, which is work culture and experience. And basically, I can refer it as the contribution and involvement that I have given or I have done for the past one month. If we subdivided it, we can see that it can be grouped into the task given or completed task and also my involvement in technical engineering issues. So firstly, we will take a look on the task given. So these are basically the three most important tasks which I find to be important and worth sharing. So the first one is on the R&D meetings. So it consists of two, the weekly R&D and also the monthly R&D. So I will break it down later on the next slide. And the second one is on the management task, which usually been given by the, uh, my supervisor and also the employees. So the management task consists of the application of softwares, Microsoft Office, Word, PowerPoints, for example, updating organization charts. And finally, I have given a chance to be involved or task 
during the TP Upcom event as a photographer. So if you break down those three main tasks into working culture and experience, we will find that the red one is the working culture and the black one is experience. So firstly on the RDM, R&D meetings, what I can see is the working culture is different from the working culture back in Malaysia. Firstly on the time management itself. So people in Malaysia, although the meeting is important, but some of the staff and some even some of the executive sometimes be late and even not attend the meetings. And in here, uh, during my two past meetings or three, I even joined another meeting with, uh, with Jenny San. That meeting, everybody is on time, and usually most meetings ended like on time or sometimes just slight overboard. Okay, and the second thing is the working culture, which I find different compared to Malaysia, is, is on the language barrier. In here, most of the meetings are in English. For example, in the R&D meeting, everything is spoken in English. So even though we came from different backgrounds, uh, some of us are Japanese, Malaysians, Turkish, and everything, but everyone speaks in English, understand English, and able to interpret the information in English. Further, communication between employees and informations are are be taken seriously and also understand it well. So for the experience that I find during the RDM, there are a couple of activities that I can share, which I did was booking rooms and collecting data, collecting materials for the meetings, and also sending invitations on the meetings, and as well as doing minutes after the meetings. Moving on to the management task, one of the working culture which is different from back in Malaysia is on the follow the due date. So in Malaysia, if we say that the due date is on Tuesday 5 p.m., most of us will send it on 5 p.m. So it's like here, I noticed that some of my colleagues, if the due date is on Tuesday 5 p.m., they will try to send it earlier, for example, on Monday or even on Tuesday, but early in the morning, so that there will be time to correct any errors in the task, and also there will be time to discuss if there are anything that are mistakenly done in the task. So from my experience, in the management task, for example, the task that I've got in constructing the management or organization in the DICV, okay, so I have to deal with the who is who, and by that way, I have access to the information in the intranet, and I get to know the executives inside the ICV and also the executives here in Mr. Shibuso in Japan. And finally, on the TPOPCOM. So during the TPOPCOM, TPOPCOM is actually an event, an event which took about two days, and I was involved on the first day. And for the working culture, which I find interesting is Mr. Ernest and his colleagues are always in a fast pace. They talk a lot faster, they discuss everything that is information based and even they move fast. So during that experience, I really get a new experience in like comparing the, the higher ups and the normal employees. So the higher ups or the top management, they have a different way of thinking and different way of communicating with each other and it is always something to learn from them. And finally, on experience, during the TP Upcom, I was close up with Mr. Ernest, and I experienced on how the top management interact with one another, as I said before. And so the second part of this is actually involvement in technical and engineering issues. So this one, I had the opportunity to join a team called One Shot Loading Project. Even though I cannot share uh, the details of the project because it is considered as classified but I can share the overview of the general thing that we have done. So, one shot loading project, it is from the RACE A lab, A stands for Advanced Technology and the objective of our team is actually to solve loading and unloading time and also to, to, to decrease workload of workers during their time because based on our study, 70% of the time 
are wasted during loading and unloading of goods. And some of the activities that I can share is we did some brainstorming, design mechanism of our prototype, pitch board presentation will be on next year February, purchase supplies will be next week if I'm not mistaken, and the prototype making. So this is actually our progress. The white one is the things that we have completed, and the yellow one is the things that we are going to do until next year. So we have done in choosing our design mechanism of our prototype, and we have surveyed supplies and deciding the dimensions, and hopefully by this week, Friday, we will contact the suppliers to order our, our materials. And the prototype making will start by the end of this year until next year. And by February, it is a pitch board presentation in order to determine that our product is good or not acceptable or it will be rejected. So there are some issues regarding our activity. So the first issue is in deciding the proper mechanism. So our team consists of five, five people. So different people have different ideas on the mechanism. Uh, for example, I have this idea to construct this mechanism and my team leader have different ideas. So on the first one week and two weeks, we have problems in deciding which mechanism is the best for our one-shot loading process. So the way that we solve it, for each mechanism, we did some calculations, research, and even do some skill drawings. Uh, therefore, we are able to determine the best mechanism for our prototype. The second issue is getting material supplies because what I notice here in Japan, it is difficult to find a, a shop that, that sells tiny, tiny pieces, for example, gears and chains easily. It has, but it is difficult and we need to get the correct information from people in order to get the thing. So the way that our team solved the problem is, our team leader, he managed to get his hands on one of the book, a catalog, which the workers here use to get the materials. So inside the book, any type of screws, sizes, any type of gears, any type of motors are available. So by doing, by using the book, we are able to contact the suppliers and getting the right dimension of every materials that we are going to use for, for the prototype. So moving on to the last last agenda, which is conclusion and future expectation. So in conclusion, for my one month here in Fuso, I have gained a lot of knowledge and also management skills and improved my communication skills. This is because uh, here I have to speak fully in English compared to Malaysia where I can mix things up and mostly people will use the local language instead of English. So here I have to depend only on English and that has successfully boosted up my communi communication skills and also the way I talk and my confidence and soft skills. The second thing is, I was able to understand the job scope of the department and adapt with the working environment. Working environment meaning of the working environment here in Japan. So it is different and the time zone is different and the breaks is different. For example, in Malaysia, during Fridays, we are given two hours of break because most of us are going to pray. But here it is different because the breaks from Monday to Friday is always the same, one hour, and fixed from 12 to 1. So that way I have to, I have to be able to adapt to the difference in time zone and also adapt in the different situations here compared to Malaysia. And lastly, improve my solving problem skill and time management. This can be proven to the quite strict time policy. It's not that strict, but we have to follow for each day. We have to be at work for about 8 hours. No more, no less. And over time, it's not so easily being given. Okay. And finally, on my future expectations. So these are my future expectations. Because I came from an engineering background, I was hoping that I was firstly being exposed to the plant working atmosphere. As we know that we are, we are on K2, which is the second premises, and we are close to K1. So I would really be glad if I was given the opportunity to be exposed 
inside the plant, getting to know the the process involved in making the trucks or vans, even getting to know the equipment that they use, and even to try having the experience of working there and on inline production. Secondly, is cross department tasks. Cross department tasks, uh, for example, uh, Mr. Chakma said that during the RDM meeting that sometimes we can go to Kitsuragawa and there and try different tasks. Okay, and next is joint workshop. So this one, I think next year should be another workshop and I hope that I will be involved in a workshop. Engineering task and also uh, given interesting engineering project. So these two is for next year. Since next year, I will shift from my industrial training into industrial project. So I hope that I will be given interesting and engineering related projects. So to conclude, these are, I have achieved three objectives for today's presentation and I hope that my presentation is enough and now for the question and answer. Okay, so thank you for your presentation. It is very well um, explained and I can see you have prepared very well. Thank you. So, couple questions is, what was the your one good experience that you get from uh, TP Opcom by you? Because you said you uh, saw how top management is interacting. So when you see uh, Mr. Ernest, what can you say like? What is the one thing to learn from him? From Mr. Ennis? Yes. Okay. Thank you for the questions. Mm -hmm. Question, uh, I will answer that. So what I did or what I observed from Mr. Ennis is that he is, uh, the way he treated his colleagues and also the way he talks to them are on a different level because I noticed that he was able to talk to all of his colleagues and asking questions because I remember inside the QM building there was this presentation inside that small room so inside the room even though the information that have been given to Mr. Ernest and, and his colleagues are for me it's like I cannot understand at all during the presentation made by the QM people but Mr. Ernest were able to understand and ask questions and he will give his opinion so that thing, his interpreting skills of something new is very extraordinary because just for a short of while, he can understand many things, give feedback and also share his own idea. So that skills or that quality is very good for the top management and for people or employees to learn in order to succeed at Mr. Yeah. Okay, very good answer. So I think it's very important he his... Um, Communication skills are really top notch, and you can see when you interact with top management, they always remember you, they always value you, even uh, very uh, low ranked members, staff members, uh, interns, they always remember this person, always communicate, which yeah. is very important for the um, especially management task, right? Yeah. So other question is, so you said like you got to know our department very well, so and also you did the uh, our organization chart. Yes. So in product engineering, what is our functions? Functions? Yes, for example, in product engineering, I think we have five or six departments. So do you know the names of the department so can you pick one department for example which you would like to do your engineering task oh okay so for me uh, it is uh, if I have the chance to pick mm. in my preference I think it would best with Mr. Andosan Mr. Andosan yeah. okay although he is far right he is at yes. Kitsurigawa yes. but the thing inside his very good day, Dr. Masri. I noticed that my video is incomplete. 
and it ended suddenly. So I just want to finish it off. My answer during the second question by my supervisor is when she questioned on which department am I interested in to do my SIP. So I said that I am interested towards Mr. Andusan. And Mr. Andusan is actually in charge in the department of testing. And I am really sure by doing tasks related to the product testing, material testing can be benefit for me and I can benefit from the job itself. So that is all for my video presentation. Thank you for your time and thank you for grading my marks in during this SIT. Have a good day, Dr. Mazli.